All right, so you and your team are now working remotely for maybe the first time ever, and it can be a little bit tough to get started. Here's how you work remotely. Okay, so what's really important is that I first start with the upsides and the downsides of working from home. The upsides are pretty easy. Obviously, you have much more flexibility. You can hire people from all over the world, which means you have much greater diversity. And your people who are working are typically going to have a much better work-life balance, and they're going to be a lot happier. And of course, as a business owner, you're going to have less overhead because you're not paying for a physical office. Now the downsides, well, those are a little bit more complicated. First off, you're gonna have less communication, at least face-to-face -face communication. It's gonna be a little bit difficult to deal with time zones, potentially. And you're also gonna have less potential trust between your employees because, well, they're not going out to happy hour with each other. I'm gonna address some of those points later on in this video. All right, so to get started, let's talk about the most important thing here, and well, that's you. So you've got your new remote job, or maybe your employer has decided to let you start working from home. What are some of the things that you need to keep in mind? First off, you need to make sure that you're being disciplined. You now have your bed, your Xbox, your computer, and everything else around you that you can just go and do instead of doing actual work. Well, you just can't do that. Now you actually need to make sure that you're getting your work done despite having all of these distractions. Next, you need to make sure that you're getting really, really good at time management. And sure, you still had to do that when you were in an office, but being at home means that you need to get even better. So that means that you need to really understand yourself, your work, and your environment to ensure that you're able to put all three of those things together to make sure that you're getting all of your work done. Now, the third thing is, well, prioritization. When you're going through your task list for either your day or for your week, you need to make sure that you're prioritizing things in the right way. Now, you wanna make sure that you're getting done with those most important things and then leaving the less important things off of your list. So in addition to setting yourself up, the next thing is that you need to make sure that you're setting up a space in your house to allow you to work from home. You can't just go working from the couch every day because well, that's gonna start hurting your neck and you're gonna start mixing together work and fun. Instead, you need to make sure that you have a specific space for just getting your work done and that you don't ever go and just hang out there. That's something like a desk or even a separate room where you're gonna go and just work. In addition to having a separate space where you're gonna work, you need to make sure that you have a separate attire. So just like you would get up, get showered, and get dressed to go to work, you need to make sure you're still doing that, but just going to your desk rather than getting into your car and going to the office. Finally, you need to make sure that you're still getting out and doing other things other than just working. So that might be exercising or going and hanging out with your kids, or that might be actually getting out and doing work somewhere else rather than just your own house. So a good place for that might be the coffee shop or a co-working space or just somewhere that you still feel comfortable to work, but just gives you a break from the day-to-day -day working from your own home. All right, so that's enough about you. Let's talk about your team. So as the manager or business owner of a remote team, there's a few things you really need to keep in mind. First off, you need to make sure that you're hiring doers. You wanna make sure that you're doing this regardless of whether your team is remote or working from your office, but hiring a doer is really, really important when you're talking about remote work. So these are people who are able to hold themselves accountable, manage their own work, and ensure that they're getting everything done without you looking over their shoulder every second. Once you've hired these people though, you need to make sure that you fully trust them because they need to be able to work on their own and know that you trust them to actually get everything done. You can still check in with them every day or every week, but don't micromanage. You wanna make sure that they feel supported and trusted when they are working. Now, the next and realistically the most important thing when we're talking about working remote is communication. It's one of the biggest challenges that people have when they're not working in a physical office space together. So this means that you need to provide both technology and techniques to ensure that people are talking. First off, you need to make sure that professional work, professional conversations are happening in the right channels. So that can be over tools like Slack or Microsoft Teams, and maybe using less email than you would if you were working in an office. You also want to make sure that your meetings are still happening face to face, but maybe over video, like using a tool like Zoom, or maybe something like WebEx or Skype or even Google Hangouts. 
These are really, really great, and you wanna make sure that you're always keeping your camera on whenever possible to make sure that you know that you're talking to people and not just machines. Now, in addition to that sort of communication, just face-to-face, -face, you may also wanna use something like Loom, which is L-O-O-M, not Zoom, and that allows you to take videos of maybe things that you're working through that you can share with your team that they can watch at their leisure. You also need to make sure that you're focusing on documenting things. And this might be documenting processes or just documenting information. For documenting information, you're gonna use something like Quip or Google Docs to make sure that things like maybe account information or how you do things is recorded in the proper way. Now, speaking of how you do things, you also need to make sure that you're focusing on the process. Businesses everywhere run on process, but especially remote businesses. So process is what you're gonna do if you're gonna do something more than once. So anything that you do over and over again, and especially if it involves multiple people, you wanna make sure you're recording in tools like Process Tree, Pipeify, or other sorts of other things. These are really, really great tools that allow you to make sure that things are getting done on a recurring basis and that balls are not getting dropped. Now, for one-off tasks, you also need to make sure that you're communicating those effectively. And some really great tools for that are things like Trello or Airtable or whatever project management tool that you prefer. These are really, really great at keeping track of all of your tasks and making sure that even though it's something that you're only gonna do once, that everyone knows what's going on and that you hold yourself accountable to actually getting those things done. Finally, you also wanna consider things like automation even more and more. Obviously, I talk about that a lot on this channel. You wanna check out those videos as well. But with automation, it's even more important when you're dealing with lots and lots of digital tools and people working all over the planet. Those are things like Zapier, If This Then That, Integramat and Microsoft Flow, as well as many others. This allows you to connect all of the tools together, make sure that things are happening automatically or maybe on a recurring basis, and that you don't have to remember to do them and you're not having to keep track of things as much as you would need to. All right, so as a little bit of a synopsis here, Remote work is the way of the future, and because of the way that the world is going right now, well, more and more people are gonna actually have to work from home, either out of choice or out of necessity. And as terrible as the reasons why that might be, there are definitely some positives. Remote work provides greater opportunity for more and more people to be able to get into the workforce. First off, people who are disabled, or maybe people who have kids who would have trouble getting into a nine to five office job, can now do the same work or even more from home. It also means that teams are able to be naturally more diverse and global, which means no longer are you just hiring from one small part of, say, San Francisco, you're hiring from all around the world at the same time. Remote work is really a wonderful thing. It's not perfect, there's definitely upsides and downsides, but you can overcome many of those downsides with some of these techniques. If this was helpful for you, please make sure to subscribe, like this video, and write a comment to let me know how it went. If there's any ideas that you have or any other sort of feedback, make sure to let me know that too. Thank you so very much for watching this video and well, have a wonderful day.